You know, I've been thinking a lot about what's happening this year. We can safely say that it's technology that has saved the day. But then again, it's been the amazing humans that made us move. You know, people like Jacinda Ardern in, in New Zealand and other leaders around the world. And the compassion that we felt from others and the solidarity that we've shown, for example, what has grown in Europe to be a solidarity movement. Uh, and uh, paying attention to science and amazing scientists that we have around the world, we clearly have seen a trend towards technology covering all of the bases and really making a very big difference. But at the same time, we realize how important really all some people are. And so I've been working on a theme and that I want to share with you on this month's edition. It's called Awesome Humans on Top of Amazing Technology. And I've talked about this for quite some time, including my first book, Technology, my, my fifth book, <laughs> Technology versus Humanity. Uh, but it's all in there in a nutshell. You know, what's happening is that we need to become awesome humans, more, more like, like more human all the time, more like a real mensch, right, to understand what, what we are and how we relate to others and all the human things like mystery, and compassion and empathy and understanding and imagination. We have to cultivate those because those are the things that only we can do. And that is what makes our, our careers, that's, that's what makes us successful or happy or both, ideally speaking. And that's going to get so much more pronounced in the next 10 years because we're going to see machines who are very, very efficient and logical and fast and better, parenthesis, than us. Right? A machine that can read scans of your skin and, and compare to three trillion pictures about whether that might be troublesome or not. Well, a, a doctor can't do that, but then there's maybe a thousand other things that the machine can't do, right? So for us to be awesome means to have an instant understanding of other humans, to understand context, you know, because AI has a very hard time understanding context. That's why it needs 300 million images of a cat on YouTube to realize if it's a vacuum cleaner, a cat, or, or, or a chewing gum stuck to a pole. <laughs> so humans can instantly do that. A two-year-old that pets a cat you know, takes a few minutes to understand what a pet, what a cat is, and would know forever after in all different variations what kind of cat it is, if it's a nice cat or a living cat or not, and so on. Humans do these things all the time, I and mean, humans are awesome. And our intelligence isn't just about logic. I mean, many people have said we don't think with the brain, we think with the body. I mean, our intelligence is kinesthetic, right? It's our body, it's musical. It's, it's intellectual, of course, but it's also emotional and 12 different kinds of intelligence, according to Gardner. What kind of intelligence do machines have? Well, they have amazing technology as far as logic and processing and so-called possibly intellectual powers goes. Right? In other words, they can, they can have unlimited memory and unlimited processing power before too long. Right? But memory and processing power is only one part of the equation of intelligence. Imagine a machine that reads all the books of philosophy, which I think Abbey and Watson can do in about less than a minute. Uh, and then you can ask the machine and say, you know, what did, what, what did Sartre think about X, Y, Z? And the machine will instantly quote you a bunch of really important things because what it can do, it can go to a, a, a giant uh, um, piece of furniture with, with 50 million drawers and just pull up the right drawer and dish you up an answer, right? Well, that's not called philosophy. You know, a, a, a machine that knows all of the textbook and can pull out the examples and can string together uh, 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 keyworded things, you know, that is interesting, but it's, it doesn't make a philosopher. What is a human philosopher? Well, it's really quite different than just having information. And it's also the very fact that we may not have all the information at a given time because we're not a machine that makes us philosophical. Right? So, so to be an awesome human is also very much a character issue. Right? Are you able to change? Are you able to develop resilience? Are you able to pull out creativity? Because that's what we do. You know, we sometimes have dormant things like creativity or imagination. But you know, our, plane is, our brain is plastic and our, our body is plastic. We can change, right? We can actually pull this up. We can do that when we're 17 or you can do it when you're 65 to some degree still in the same way, right? So 
what is happening right now is that I think our future is to be an awesome human on top of amazing technology. And technology is getting more amazing every second. <laughs> I mean, uh, just GPT-3 I looked at the other day, you know, the AI narrative uh, engine, right? The um, it, It's mind-boggling what we can do. It just type stuff in and it will build an app or JavaScript or CSS or, you know, it will do basically what a programmer does by just having a voice command or a typing command, right? Uh, and of course, technology is getting mind-bogglingly amazing. 5G, 10G, <laughs> you know, in 10 years will be roughly 9 billion people on the internet. We're going to have quantum computing, trillions of devices on the internet of things, uh, nanobots in our bloodstream. Yes, that is amazing technology, and we should avail ourselves of it. But keep in mind, too much of a good thing can be a very bad thing. When we use too much amazing technology, we may become amazing technology, at which point we are, you guessed it, a commodity. We don't want that. We want to stay uniquely human because that's where our value is and that's where the fun is. Right? And that's where we are going in our future of our work and our jobs. And I guarantee you every company in the next decade or period will want to hire uniquely human humans. Right? So I always say, uh, of course, I'd like to be better and faster and smarter. That is a good thing to want to be. But in the end, I really want to be more human, an awesome human on top of amazing technology. Mm -hmm.